Welcome to Good News for a Change, a video and audio podcast on the Gospel with Father Constantine Lazarakis of the Dormition of the Virgin Mary Greek Orthodox Church of the Hamptons in Southampton, New York. In this episode, guest preacher Father Themi Adamapoulo speaks on St. Mary of Egypt and God's forgiveness. We honor this morning a very interesting lady, St. Mary of Egypt, in her youth, was not precisely a model of virtue. St. Mary of Egypt, in her youth, was a member of the oldest profession, and she plied her trade upon ships of pilgrims. Imagine now, from Alexandria, back in the 4th and 5th centuries, there were many, many uh, pilgrims going from Alexandria to the Holy Land. And they would go by ship. Some would go by foot, but some would go by ship. And Mary, the before she was converted, would go on those ships and make sure that she would achieve enough money through her so-called profession. Imagine what would think of her if somebody would say to us later on, this will be a saint. What would it take for such a, a young lady to turn everything around from such depths of immorality to become Saint Mary of Egypt? Well, it takes the grace of God and it takes the power of our Lord Jesus Christ and it takes the coming of the Holy Spirit to change a sinner into the journey towards the kingdom of heaven and in brief what we see is what God's love does for us the love of God who does not condemn but wishes to save while we are still alive no matter what sin you have committed no matter how much we have fallen into sin as long as we turn to the Lord in penance in tears in contrition and we ask for forgiveness the love of God is beyond understanding and will come and provide for us extraordinary opportunities to achieve things that one would never dream of achieving simply because we have received the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. through his love. This was, that's if legacy. therefore the Lord I have received and you and have received as sinners sins. that we are, unworthy as we are of God, if we have received such grace, such love, then what is our obligation? Brothers and sisters, we must forgive. Forgive those who hurt you. God forgave you and me when we were against Him, when we forgot Him, when we rebelled against Him, when in short we became His enemy, God forgave us. Now, you are to forgive as well. Yes, it's not logical to forgive someone who abuses you. It doesn't make sense to uh, forgive someone who is against you. It simply is irrational to forgive someone who is hurting you and even to the point of making you bitter, angry, even in tears. It is not logical to forgive someone who has destroyed your life. 
It doesn't make sense. But holy brothers and sisters, we are not dealing with logic here. We are not dealing with rationality here. We are not dealing with things that make sense to us on the worldly level. We are dealing with the mystical power of God who says, love one another and they will know, the world outside will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. How can it be that I can be forgiven of all my sins by the blood of Jesus and the sacrifice of Christ and the mockery he received and the spear and the nails and the whippings. How can I accept that forgiveness and then turn around and, and not forgive you for something petty or even something big? If I do not forgive you, then I should not expect to be forgiven by God. We just recited the Lord's Prayer, and we said to God just now, we said to God that we should, He should forgive us to the level that we forgive others. That we should be forgiven to the level that we forgive others. So we are asking God that if we do not forgive other people, God don't forgive me. But without God's forgiveness, where will I go? What shall I do? Where will I end up? It is only, it makes absolute spiritual sense to turn the other cheek. Never, ever seek revenge. Revenge is, is for losers. Revenge is for those peoples who have no spiritual wisdom. Revenge is for cowboys. It isn't for you and me. Revenge is for a Clint Eastwood film. That's all. It's a film. That's all it is. Revenge is not for you and me. We are Christians. We are followers of Jesus. And in the same way that the Lord God took Mary of Egypt and forgave her of the most heinous crimes of immorality, you can't get any lower than trying to get customers on board a ship heading for the Holy Land. That's what Mary was doing trying to bring down men of God who were going to the Holy Lands and she was just going there to tempt them for the sake of money. Now if God can forgive her and the power of God we can see how great it is that she becomes such a wonderful, wondrous saint performing miracles, then it is up to us to attain that power of forgiveness and to aspire to it. How? Please forgive your enemies. Do not seek revenge. Do not seek to hurt the people that are hurting you. Why? God said, revenge is mine. Your enemy. The person who is hurting you, the people who are hurting you, the people who are abusing you, the people who are exploiting you, the people who are making fun of you, the people who don't respect you, let it be. Give it over to the Lord. Bring it to the foot of the cross. Lord, take care of it. I forgive them. And when God hears that, and you mean it from the bottom of your heart and you really mean it forgive them Lord then God takes over 
And then God says, you are heaping burning coals upon their head. You are heaping burning coals upon their head. Because God knows how to punish. You do not know how to punish. You do not know how to punish. Take someone to court, big deal. Get some money, he's clean, he's gone, he doesn't care. How are you going to punish someone who hurts you? You can't do it. You don't know how to do it. And you shouldn't want to do it. Forgive them. And God takes over. And when God takes over, ladies and gentlemen, he knows exactly what to do to help you in your moment of forgiveness, in your moment of generosity, in your moment of megalocardia, of greatness of heart. God will take over. And God knows how to handle your enemies. And God knows how to handle those people who are doing all kinds of wicked things against you. God knows what he should do. But the secret, ladies and gentlemen, don't get involved in revenge business. Turn the other cheek. Peter said to the Lord, Lord, how many times do I forgive my brother who has sinned against me? Three times? Or seven times? Now you see the Jews said, in the rabbinical teachings of the Talmud and the, and the Mishnah, these are Jewish sacred texts, the rabbi said, you forgive up to three times in a day. What Peter did, he doubled it and added one more, seven times 70 in one day. That's what the Lord said. Peter said seven times, the Lord made it seven times 70. That means an indefinite number of times I am to forgive you every time you hurt me. I am to forgive you every time you hurt me. And the more I learn to forgive, I become stronger and stronger. I become immune to ridicule. I become immune to the hurt of others. I become immune to the grief that comes from the enemy who exploits you. I become stronger and I have a shield. And no matter what they do against you, you have learned to become strong through the practice, the holy practice of forgiveness. Forgive and be a child of God. Forgive and you become like Christ. Tomorrow we are celebrating John of the Ladder who spoke about the various virtues, uh, the ladder that leads up to the kingdom of heaven. The supreme virtue, none higher, higher than any other virtue for us Christians is love. A Hindu has similar teachings to us in some ways, but they do not have love. Islam has many similar teachings to us. But the power of mercy and forgiveness that we have is not found in the Quran. The Jewish people have wonderful teachings through their rabbis, the Mishnah, the Talmud. But the power of Christian love and the teachings of Jesus on love, they do not have. We have. We are the only religion that has the power of absolute, radical, all-absorbing love, unconditional love. <coughs> Holy fathers, brothers and sisters, if you come out of this spiritual retreat with nothing else, remember, you will benefit spiritually and even materially if you learn to forgive one another, you are not weak when you forgive. You are strong. 
You are not weak when you tell the, your enemy, I forgive you. You are not weak. You are a superman. You are a superwoman when you do that. You don't know how strong you are when you forgive. But society tells us, no, we need to be strong. We have to get revenge back. All the films, that the novels about revenge, it's a big theme in Hollywood. Revenge, revenge, revenge. You cannot get a script in Hollywood without the theme of revenge. Yeah, we'll, do it. we'll do it afterwards. We'll do it whenever But we leaves. have a different script. The script of the New Testament, the words of Jesus, love one another as I have loved you. Forgive one another as I have forgiven you. Do that and you will be blessed. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. You've been listening to Good News for a Change, a video and audio podcast on the Sunday Gospel with Father Constantine Lazarakis. To hear more, visit the Orthodox Christian Network at myocn.net. That's myocn.net.